Most of the cinema sins that are in this video I wouldn't have noticed if it wasn't for this comment from No Sanctuary. And that's not an exaggeration. Thank you, No Sanctuary. There are a couple frames where the zero on the sin counter isn't there. What's your name? Django. Then you're exactly the one I'm looking for. Does the movie ever explain how he heard about Django in the first place? Like, who was the guy that told him the story about Django? This one slave from four states away who one time worked with these white dudes but then got sold and is now in Texas? Yeah, go see him. He'll be able to lead you to the criminals you're looking for. It's likely that Schultz went to the Karukin plantation and asked about the Brittle brothers. He would then be told that they moved to a different plantation and that they just sold a slave who used to work for them to the Speck brothers. Schultz would then look at a list with Django's name on it and then go looking for the Speck brothers. It's not nearly as ludicrous as you're making it sound. Also, he managed to find Django without knowing what he looked like. I mean, how hard could it be to find three slave-driving brothers in Gatlinburg without knowing what they look like? Schultz probably did know what Django looks like. The people at the Karukin plantation might have told Schultz specific details about what Django looks like. Such as the big scar on his face. They call me Hildy. Who the f*** is she talking to? This is clearly a dream sequence. Django is just thinking about this. Do you think this actually happened? Why do Django's memories of this incident look like someone filmed a TV that was playing a 70s movie? This is how actual memories work. If you remember an event in your head, or even imagine one, it's going to look similar to this. Also, that's not how to properly spell 70s. Brilliant and visionary director relies on stupid movie trope of the bad guy fumbling his gun. Most people, when they suddenly realize that their life could end in the next minute, aren't going to be prepared. Considering how sudden this happened and how disorganized Roger Brittle looks, he's definitely not going to act like a minute man. Okay, so the way Tarantino shoots this, perspective-wise, the guy hightailing it across the field is going left to right. But then when Schultz shoots him, he's shot from in front. But Schultz even tracked from left to right as the guy was riding, so how in the name of the magic bullet did he pull this shot off? Granted, this is unlikely. It's not impossible. The scene was shot in slow-mo, and if the horse was going fast enough, the bullet could clip through, as it does in the film. My wife worked all day getting 30 bags together for you. Um, there's easily more than 30 guys in this racist posse. He was estimating. Movie explains away the fact that the slave is a crack shot by saying it's just in his DNA. The kid's a natural. This guy says that a lot of people are really good at shooting when they first go out hunting. Slave auction town in Mississippi isn't the place for you to visit. Free or not, it's just too dangerous. When the snow melts, I'll take you to Greenville myself. Why doesn't he just take Django to Greenville himself right now? You sure did cut out the part where Schultz said that they're going to make some money by rounding up all the bounties in the state. You work with me through the winter till the snow melts. I give you a third of my bounties. So we make some money this winter. When the snow melts, I'll take you to Greenville myself. If he's a natural, why does he need to have a practice montage? Ah, uh, yes, because as we all know, if you're good at something, you don't need to practice. That's why after you study for a memorization test and you do a great job once, you don't need to study again. It'd be good if I could have a confidential strategy meeting. How does anyone buy this excuse for a conversation between Django and Schultz? What are they supposedly strategizing about? Which fighter they haven't yet seen that they're gonna buy? Off the top of my head, how aggressive they want to be how much they're willing to pay, how they're gonna approach the situation, who's gonna take the lead. By the way, that was word for word what No Sanctuary said. I understand Schultz's reluctance to shake Candy's hand, even on principle, but he not only endangers the deal, but endangers both Django and Broomhilda's lives by being stubborn over a handshake. I would give this a pass, but everyone else says that this is a character flaw, not a movie flaw. And considering the fact that I trust the CinemaSins comment section far more than CinemaSins, I'm not gonna let this slide. Schultz decides to apologize to Django when he should be blasting the unobservant Butch. The gun that Schultz used to kill Candy only has one bullet. He couldn't blast away Butch if he wanted to. Jamie Foxx's balls. Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Why didn't the explosion scare these horses into running away like the other ones? Some animals act differently than others. Why would anyone sit at this angle with this particular view? Maybe he's into guys. D'Artagnan, mother Boy, Django sure is angry about D'Artagnan's death, for which he is basically single-handedly responsible. What? While it is true that Django could have done more to prevent the death of D'Artagnan, saying that he single-handedly killed him would be a lie. Also, single-handedly is not one word. It's two separate words. 
Sometimes they have a hyphen in between them. Boy, it sure is lucky that everyone's off at the funeral while Django sets up the death trap at Candyland. Lucky? Django specifically waited for everyone to go to Calvin Candy's funeral so that no one would be in the house when he set up the explosion. Do you think he just happened to set up the day of the funeral? Django blows his cover, slowly walks to the balcony, and lights a candle in his gun hand and isn't blown away immediately. Why didn't Miss Laura just run for another room when the shooting started? They're aware of how quickly Django can draw his gun. It makes sense that they wouldn't immediately try to fire at him. Gunshots do not make you fly back. We need to stop promoting this myth. And even if they did, Django shot her from the side. Why does she fly back like that? The subtitles appear too early. The whole reason for Django even being here, Broomhilda, sits out in plain view in front of the house instead of hiding in case something goes wrong. There were three men with guns, two slaves he didn't want to kill, a middle-aged housewife, and an elderly he also had the jump on them, and had two guns. Pretty sure it was a safe bet on Broomhilda's part that it was okay to bring the horses around. Also, again, practically word for word what No Sanctuary said. Tarantino couldn't resist putting one more N-word in the end credit scene. Who was that nigga? I don't have a problem with not censoring things, but Jeremy, what is the point of censoring swear words if you're not gonna censor this? The H comes before the R in anachronism. He's the guy who's the talk of the town With the restless gun Don't you bother to fool him around Keeps the vomits on the run, boy Keeps the vomits on the run